Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, we're going to be talking about how to properly use current limiting resistors with LEDs. As you probably know, we are working on building a 4-bit computer using individual transistors, and then we are going to build artificial neurons as we work our way towards creating non-biological human consciousness. Let's get to it. Right here, we have a diode. And most people know that the voltage drop across the diode is going to be somewhere between 0.6 and 0.7 volts. And if we look at our voltmeter, we can see that the voltage drop is 0.638 volts. Now the question is, what is the voltage drop going to be across this yellow LED? The voltage drop across this yellow LED is 1.876 volts. So a lot of times people think that because the voltage drop across the diode is 0.6 or 0.7 volts, that the voltage drop across an LED is also going to be 0.6 or 0.7 volts, but that is definitely not the case. And there's actually a bunch of different types of diodes, and they actually all have different voltage drop levels depending on the materials that they're built with. So let's look at a couple more examples of LEDs that have different voltage drops. Right here we have five different color LEDs and they're all powered with a five volt battery pack and all of the resistor values here are 2K. And now we're going to check out what the voltage drop value is across each LED. So for the red LED, the voltage drop is 1.829 volts. The blue LED is 2.6. The white LED is 2.71. The yellow LED is 1.88. And finally, the green LED is 2.33 volts. And now you know that the forward voltage drop across different color LEDs actually have different values. I typically like to build circuits where the current limiting resistor is going into the positive rail, and then I use a black jumper to go into the ground. However, it's perfectly valid to use a red jumper wire to connect to the positive rail, and then add your current limiting resistor going into the ground. The voltage drop across both of these LEDs is going to be exactly the same. Some people might think, oh, well, if you see that the voltage right here is going directly into this LED, so it's going to burn it up. And that is not the case. Regardless of the position of the current limiting resistor, the voltage drop across this yellow LED is going to be the same, and the current through both of the circuits is going to be the same. This is a three millimeter red LED, and this is a five millimeter red LED. And the voltage drop across both of these LEDs is actually the same, and the max allowable current is also the same. The only difference is the light intensity for the five millimeter LED is going to be higher than the three millimeter LED. Here we can see that the LEDs are very different brightnesses depending on the value of the current limiting resistor. This resistor right here is 150 ohm, and you can see that the LED is super bright. This LED is 330 ohm. This one is 1K, 2K, 10K, and 100K. And you can see that even with this 100K current limiting resistor, we actually still have a partially lit LED. Sure, it's super, super dim, but it is still lit. And some people might think, well, I did my calculation where the max current allowable through the LED means that I should use a 150 ohm resistor, and then they're gonna end up with a super bright LED. Whenever I'm building circuits on breadboards, I typically like to use a current limiting resistor value around 2K, because you can see that the LED is plenty bright to notice that it's on, but it's not so bright that it is obnoxious in the camera. Now it's important to know how to calculate your minimum resistor value for your current limiting resistor. So right here is the equation. You have your supply voltage minus the forward voltage drop of the LED divided by the max current. So for our example problem here, we have five volts minus a two volt forward voltage drop divided by 0.02 amps, and that's going to give us 150 ohms as the smallest resistor value that we can use. And that'll make it so that the current going through that circuit is 20 milliamps, which is the maximum allowable current through the LED. This table right here shows some examples of the minimum resistor values depending on the supply voltage, the forward voltage drop across the different LEDs, and the max current rating of the LED. You can see that our example values here are in the table. So if our supply voltage is five volts and the forward voltage drop across the LED is two volts and our max current rating is 20 milliamps, then our minimum resistor value is 150 ohms. A forward voltage drop of two volts is going to be similar to a yellow LED, 
and maybe a blue LED would have a forward voltage drop closer to three volts. And if that's the case, and we have a five volt supply voltage with a blue LED, then our minimum resistor value needed is actually smaller. It's actually 100 ohms because the forward voltage drop across the LED is larger. Now, if you increase the voltage to say nine volts, you have the same forward voltage drop across the LED, the same max current rating, but you are going to need a larger resistor value whenever you have a larger supply voltage. What this table basically shows us, if we're using a supply voltage of nine volts or less, and we're using typical LEDs that have a max current rating of around 20 milliamps, as long as we're using a resistor value that's 350 ohm or larger, our LEDs are going to be safe. So if you're not quite sure what size resistor to use and you're using typical LEDs, just make sure you use a resistor that is around 350 ohms or larger. If you're trying to have your LED be as bright as possible, you should use this equation to calculate your minimum resistor value and then use that size resistor. It's important to make sure that you don't exceed the power rating for the resistor. This resistor right here has a max power dissipation rating of 0.25 watts, as does all of these other resistors. We can see right here the power equation where power equals current times voltage. This resistor right here being 150 ohm has about 20 milliamps of current going through it. So if we take 20 milliamps of current times the three volts, which is the voltage drop across this resistor, we get a power dissipation of 0.06 watts, which is well below the 0.25 watts that are allowable. And all of these other resistors are even going to have less power dissipated with them, so they are all safe as well. It's important to keep in mind that if you do have a really high voltage, you can exceed the power rating of the resistor. If you want to watch another interesting video, click right here.